that was made. Jesus has done these marvelous things. Salvation is here, so we need not fear. Now, sometimes in life, there can come troubles. There can come problems. There can come things that get you to be discouraged. And at that time, you typically have the reaction of, we're lost, lost, hopelessly lost. What are we going to do? Panic. But that's not what Jesus wants. See, when we are worrying, Jesus actually calls us to something different. The question is, are you going to be a warrior, or are you going to be a warrior? See, Jesus wants us to be warriors of prayer, who pray and who change the world, not through violence, but through calling on God, through trusting in Him. In fact, my uh, dear grandma, uh, my mom's mom, uh, Vera, she actually was a very strong prayer warrior. But sometimes she would go to the other extreme, you know. So when she turned worries into prayers, she was able to do amazing things for God. But it's a temptation, right? So the, the question is, when we have these anxious things, when we have these problems, these things that come upon us, what are we going to do? Are we going to stress over it? Are we going <clears> to <throat> worry about it? Are we going to give ourselves gray hairs? I mean, you know, I have some myself, so I, I can understand, but the thing is, we need to actually put these things in the hands of God. We need to go to the cross, and we need to lay these things down, and we need to say, Jesus, help, help. I'm going to trust you with this, and I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to ask you, and if this doesn't work out, we're going to talk. We'll have a long conversation about that, but see... It's about um, trusting, and it's also about fear. Because as our Kentaro was saying, you know, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God, and you shall bear a son. Salvation. Yeshua. This is also called victory. It's called saving health. It's called saving power. And in the Bible here, what happens is this salvation tends to go hand in hand with righteousness. They go together. So in the person of Jesus, you have a guy whose name is Salvation. And what did he do? He came and he died in our place. But he was the sinless one. He was the righteous one. He was the perfect lamb who died that we could come to God. Amen? Amen. Verse 2, the Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. Now this isn't not only for just the Jewish people. So if you're Jewish, God bless you. That's awesome. But it's for us too. It's to the nations. It's in the sight of the heathen. It's to every nation, the sight of the Gentiles, to all the nations. It's for the others, those who feel that they don't belong. For the Goyim, everyone who's non-Jewish. Thank you, Lord, that we do not need to live in the fear of heathenism. Heathenism. That we don't need to fear, you know, nature around us. We don't need to fear the mountains and the waters and the trees and just capricious fate. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you, God. And thank you, Lord, that we can know God through Jesus, his son. Verse 3. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Now what's kind of cool here is uh, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. That actually, that phrase sticks. So even in the NIV, they use the same phrase. They're like, they put it great, we're just going to keep it. So God has done wonderful things. He's done saving things. But what are the big saving acts that God has done? Well, think of Joseph. Joseph, who was sold into slavery, ended up saving his whole family. And he became the prime minister of Egypt. And he saved Egypt from a terrible famine that would have wiped people out. Moses, he was the prince of Egypt. And what did he do? He turned his back on that. And he came and he set God's people free. And not only that,
but he split the sea. That's pretty awesome. David, you know, he defeated Goliath, the giant, but also he made Israel important. He actually made them into a nation that people were like, yeah, those Israelites, they know what they're doing. Hezekiah, he, when he was surrounded by the Assyrians, when the rest of the world had been conquered, he trusted in God, even though there were so many armies around him that logically he had no chance whatsoever. He trusted in God, and he cried out to God. And what did God do? God acted. Hezekiah didn't have the, the army or the strength to do anything, but he called out to God, and God sent his angels, and they defeated the armies around him. When Hezekiah looked outside, he was like, wow. Esther, she trusted in God, and through this trust and through this courage, she managed to save the entire Jewish people because they were about to be destroyed, just wiped off the map. Ezra and Nehemiah, they restored the temple. They trusted in God and they put their faith into action. They went out and they left what was familiar to go and do something better for the Lord. But most importantly, Jesus, Yeshua, think of what he's done. And even in your own life, God has acted and we should celebrate it. I mean, we had 13 people at the first Christmas party. That's great. And I can speak of other things. God has acted. He has not forgotten you. Do not fear. Salvation is here, so be of good cheer. Good Christian men rejoice. Good Christian people rejoice. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a song. With trumpets and a sound of coronet, make joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Now, this is speaking about music. I like music. Music's fun. And it talks about singing. It talks about the harp. So you have stringed instruments. So you have the guitar, the piano, the violin, and all the stringed instruments. It talks of the uh, brass, the trumpets. So you got the brass, the trumpet. And exactly, the exactly. And it talks about the horns, but these were natural horns. So you'd include like the oboes and the woodwinds, you know, the things which you don't make out of metal, but you fashion. And also, uh, later in the song, it talks about the rivers clapping their hands in percussion, which uh, is great. So you got a verified symphony unto God. Now this is a song of ascent. As the pilgrims, they would come up to Jerusalem. They would sing this. And music, it just makes people come together. I don't think I need to tell you that at Christmas time, when I start to hear the carols and the old familiar songs, it just, it warms my heart, you know? It makes me think, yeah, that, you know, there can be peace on earth. There can be things that bring people together. John Wesley said, sing lustily and with a good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep. <laughs> but lift up your voice with strength. Now I think of my dear nephew Aaron. And Aaron likes to sing. But he doesn't always get all the notes. Aaron, he sings, Jesus loves me. And when he sings, Jesus loves me, it's not, you know, the prettiest or beautiful, but he is making a joyful noise unto the Lord. And when you hear it, you smile, and God smiles. And when we sing unto the Lord, you know, it doesn't matter how good of a musician we are, and how beautiful our singing voice is, we're called to just make a joyful noise. We're called to shout, hooray, huzzah, yeah, hallelujah, nice, sweet. We're called to make that noise. Verse 7, let the sea roar in the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together. See, uh, it says hills here, but it also says mountains in other ones. So what they're actually talking about is they're talking about the hill country. Because Israel couldn't defend the flat land, but they'd be protected in the hills. And in the same way, they trusted in God as their rock and as their refuge and that they could shelter in his presence. 
But this is talking about nature itself making noise, praising the Lord. The Lord, you see, is in nature. When I go out for a walk, and I'm out you know, in the woods, or I'm on the top of a mountain, and I look out and I look at the beauty of God's creation, it just fills me with this sense of wonder, this sense of awe. And you know, I just want to break out and praise the Lord. I'm just like, wow, thank you. This is awesome. You know, when you see, like, uh, something really beautiful, something really special, it just makes you have that wonder, have that awe. In Isaiah, it talks about the trees of the fields. They shall clap their hands. This is joy to the whole world, even the fishes in the deep blue sea. <laughs> and you see, for the sea to even be Praising the Lord. That's pretty amazing. Because the sea was a symbol of evil. It was something the Israelites were afraid of. They were not navy people. Jesus, though, he calmed the sea. He walked on the sea. He showed that he has power over the whole world. And Isaiah, it speaks of this joy. When God shall restore all things. Plus, it also talks about Jesus. Salvation is here, so heaven is near. Before the Lord, before he cometh to judge the earth, with righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. See, the first advent is Christmas. That's today. But the second one is coming. Matthew 21, 19, when the triumphal entry, Jesus enters Jerusalem and people are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And people will shout that again when Jesus returns. In Revelation 19, 6, the earth itself is singing unto the Lord. Nature is praising God. Sing hallelujah. You see, God is king. And ultimately, he will be Lord of all. And it's our choice. Do we bend the knee now? Or does the decision get made for us? Jesus, in what he did on the cross... He came as a baby so that he might save us from sin and death. He is the conqueror of death. And Jesus will come to judge at the second advent, the parousia, when Christ returns. And to that I say, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come. So salvation is here, and we need not fear. Salvation is here, so be of good cheer. Salvation is here, and heaven is near. Would you join me in prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, I want to trust you. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to cast all my anxieties on you, because you even look after the birds in the air and the flowers of the fields. I want to trust you, God, with my worries and my anxieties. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to be able to make a joyful noise this Christmas time, just to be able to rejoice and sing loudly. Dear Lord Jesus, may I not forget that you will come again, and may I live expectantly, and may I live with heaven on my mind. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.